if you saw my video painting my Vortex scope with Brownells Alumahide, this right here is going to be part two of it, kind of. Still have that same can of paint left over. This time I'm going to look at painting the barrel of one of my rifles. Let me go over the rifle setup that I have real quick. Um, I have a Surefire Warden uh, muzzle compensator. Underneath it's a Surefire muzzle brake. Kind of helps out when you have to do things. Ended up adding the uh, Magpul bipod to it. And then this right here is the Vortex uh, scope that I painted last time. Color is kind of like that Magpul color. And then the stock I'm using is a McCree Precision, which I bought a few years back, and it's been a really good uh, stock overall. I've got a folding brace, and it's a really good chassis system. Added a hoe grip to it as well, so it holds up pretty good. But this uh, rifle's kind of neat. The action on it's going to be a Remington 700. It's the uh, tactical barrel that's threaded, and it also has a 1 in 10 twist instead of 1 in 11. So let me get this thing on the table, get it apart. I'll get it taped up, do a paint thing on it, and then we'll do a review of it. All right, for taking off the warden, there's like a little push thing here. You just rotate it and allows you to take it off. Basically, it's a blast deflector, so these ports right here can be kind of loud going off. Um, Always Survives and Midwest Survivor, they did a little shooting thing and... Muzzle blast on the side kind of got them a bit, so this is something that's kind of nice if you're going to a range or something like that, but it'll have to come off for the painting that I do. It does have a locking and folding stock, and I need to take the uh, scope off, so we'll just get that off and have to go to a range probably in Zerwit later anyways. Hopefully when I do the painting, I'm not going to hit too much stuff uh, on the action where the uh, lug nuts and other things are, where the lug is, so... I won't have to worry about going through too much of the zeroing process. But this right here will just come off and next we'll undo the chassis itself and should be good to go. Um, it operates on a ACIS based uh, magazine. You can use the uh, plastic PMAG ones, you can use the ACIS and McCree has its own ones as well. Go ahead and remove the bolt, just push in on the bolt release, pull back and get the bolt out. And Separate that out of it. Using a 530 seconds, we're going to remove the two uh, action bolts that are in here. And they're just going to come on out and we'll get this thing separated from the chassis itself. And with the two bolts right here removed, you can kind of see them there. Then the action itself comes off from the two bolts here. And this right here is what we're left with. I'm probably going to tape some of this off and just mainly paint the barrel part, and I'm debating about the muzzle or not, I might just do the whole barrel that I end up painting. I don't know how well it'll show up here, but it's a 1 in 10 tactical, has a little bit tighter twist, gives you a little bit more twist rate to it. It is a shorter barrel, um, and muzzle brake, like I said, kind of helps reduce a little bit of the recoil and stuff like that, but we're going to go ahead and paint this with the uh, Brownells paint, and See how it holds up. Probably won't do the uh, action part, mainly just the barrel, I think. McCree chassis is a pretty good uh, chassis system. This one is the R7 ST G5, I guess, or yeah, it looks like G5, but the RS7 ST, they've done a lot of changes to these chassis over the years and stuff like that. Um, but when they came out, they were pretty neat, made for the Accuracy International style system. Like I said, the Magpul style magazines work with it. Um, McCree Precision makes their own version that are the steel ones. A um, little bit longer, more rounds than the Accuracy International ones, which there's some pretty expensive ones overall. And then Magpul also makes a five round version, so you can get a five or a ten round depending on type of uses you want. But I think it's good to stick with the uh, Accuracy International style chassis systems that are compatible. It's easier to find magazines. The one off ones can be a little harder and Sometimes you may be hit or miss for being able to find magazines or if you run into issues with them. The bolt handle I added onto this is one of the KRG ones, the Kinetic Research Group's KRG Ops. But it's a decent one. It matches that kind of flat, dark earth, tan color. Um, it also gives you a little bit more grip to grab onto and everything. But that's one of the ones I have on it. And Next I'll try to get this thing prepped for some paint and do some stuff to it. All right, so I took a coat hanger and ended up hooking it through the barrel uh, muzzle device taped it off 
Um, but the bottom of the area here, I'm gonna let get painted and everything. And then on the bottom area, I ended up just wrapping some tape and stuff around it. I really don't want any paint on the front of the lug too much. I can sand it off if need be, but the front lug where it matches up on the uh, chassis, I wanna keep that within the same specs. I don't care if a little bit of tan gets on the front of the uh, scope mount and everything, but I basically taped it up. Hopefully no paint will get on the trigger group and everything. And I'm gonna see how this Brownells paint holds up on it and everything. Uh, like I said, I had good luck on the scope, so hopefully this will go well. This is the Brownells Alumahide 2. It's in Magpul FDE. It's a pretty good match for it. It's a super tough, long-lasting epoxy finish according to the label, and so far it's held up really well for me. A lot better than any of the other rattle can spray paints out there. Might not be as good as Cerakote, but so far it's held up well for me. Um, there's just some texture stuff that comes out of it versus being as smooth as Cerakote is, and we'll go over that. All right, I just spent a few minutes shaking this thing up. Um, you do have to shake it quite a bit. And as you spray, sometimes you have to turn it upside down to clean out the nozzle and everything. But I'll try to spray this as best I can. Um, I may have to stop recording because the mist is real fine. I don't want to mess up my camera or my phone or anything. Yeah, the wind's not working too well. Let me just angle this. And the wind is not your friend and you gotta kinda keep the distance right on it. But I don't know how well it shows up on here. There's a little bit of like texture to it and everything. Um, I wasn't sure how well the paint would hold up after sitting around for a year or so, but it seems all right. Like I said, it goes on kinda thin, but it leaves little texture spots like uh, popcorn speckling and stuff but I'm gonna give it another coat and let it dry and see if maybe once it dries, it looks a little bit better. All right, getting ready to put a second coat on. I don't know how well it shows up, but with the wind and everything, a little bit of a challenge to get it to go where it wants to go, but it does go on pretty thin, um, but it does hold up pretty well. Hopefully once I get this done, maybe out of the shade and in the sunlight, maybe it'll show up a little better. One of the reasons for me not painting the uh, bottom to action part is so hopefully I can just mount it in the chassis as soon as I'm done and it dries a little bit. So that way I don't have to let it cure for two weeks before mounting it. I can just mount it and then let it cure for two weeks. All right, so I got the barrel down um, off the tree that I had it hanging on. And we're gonna get this stuff off and get it mounted on the uh, chassis. Sixty-five inch pounds on the action bolts. And that's mounted back up and good to go. Sixty-five inch pounds on the scope mount. Good to go there as well. Go ahead and put the bolt back in. Good to go there as well. Put in the magazine. Good there. And let's put on the warden. Lines up, locked on. All right, so I got the rifle painted. I don't know how well the barrel part will show up, but to where the barrel meets the uh, chassis right here, I think overall the paint came out pretty good. Like I said, it does have a little bit of a texture to it, but it does end up mounting the uh, scope and everything. Wasn't sure after a year or so how well that uh, Brownells paint will spray. But like I said, if you take your time and work it, Works out pretty good. Um, the wind was kind of kicking up, so I kind of ended up rushing it a little bit, but overall it still came out pretty good. I'm happy with it. Um, like I said, the Surefire Warden Brake, Vortex Scope, the Kinetic Research Group Bolt Handle, the McCree Chassis, the Magpul Magazines, and the Magpul Bipod. Also the Magpul uh, Rifleman Sling is on here. But pretty neat little setup. As far as I know, this rifle right here is complete. It also has a little uh, pouch on the back and other magazines in there. But next step to do is get out to the range and shoot this rifle hopefully sometime either this year or next year. A lot of stuff in line and not a lot of range time. Let me roll you some video stuff.
do me a favor. Make sure you subscribe to my channel. Give me a like. I appreciate all the support I can get. Cav Cop out.